Myself and Jenny have always had a sort of agreement. We rarely speak of our past. It's too painful for each of us. To be truthful, I rarely knew anything of Jenny before she moved to London. But one night, Jenny's questions brought back memories of Earth before the apes took over. So, I'm guessing it was just a massive forest then? She rolled over in bed, her face beside mine. More of a jungle than a forest. The air was different, fresher, lighter. Well, any air outside London is fresher and lighter. <laughs> Seriously, Mum, how you put up with this smog, I will never know. Reaching out, I ran my hand through Jenny's hair. I have thought about leaving, but this is our home now. Occasionally, I would leave the city and venture over to Bournemouth, but where I was now was where my heart truly belonged. I would have loved to have seen it. London, or green. Did you have buildings? Occasionally. We mainly lived in caves and slept up trees. <laughs> the way you toss and turn at night, it's a wonder you ever stayed up in a tree. <laughs> Jenny giggled to herself, a sound I can never help but smile at. If my race could see the love mess I had become, I would have been cast out instantly. My eyes drifted to the pile of dream state candles in the corner of her room. Jenny's eyes followed mine. What you thinking, me ducks? Jenny had not yet been introduced to the wonders of the dream world but the idea which just entered my mind would be the perfect opportunity to show her. Jumping out of bed, I picked up one of the candles. Jenny pushed back the covers and walked towards me, her nightgown clinging to her figure. How about I show you? With the Dreamstay candle? So what? We both fall asleep? And wake up in whichever setting I choose. Namingly London, before apes. <laughs> you really need to stop calling it that, you know. Never, I replied, teasing. With that, we set up. Both of us sat on the floor, cross-legged, surrounded by pillows. The candle was lit, and Jenny gently drifted to sleep. I followed shortly after. My eyes fluttered open. The first thing I noticed was all the green. The sounds of the jungle surrounding us. The sun pushing its way through the jungle's canopy. Jenny's head was resting on my side as she awoke. I looked down into her hazel eyes, which were wide with both confusion and wonder. Wakey, wakey, my love. Welcome to the world of my childhood. Jenny shook with excitement, taking in everything around her, the tall, overhung trees and down at the mossy floor. She took my hand with a grin, taking over the majority of her face. Oh, this is so beautiful. Can we explore more? Sadly, we can't drift too far. Remember, this is all just from my memory. If this is from your memory... What's so significant about it? Something special must have happened here for you to show me. I raised my head to the warm sun and breathed in its rays. My arm drifted down to Jenny's shoulders as I pulled her in close. That tree, the shortest out of the three. I pointed, my safe haven when I was young, the place I would retreat to when I wanted to think. I used to sit up there and dream, just myself, alone with my thoughts. Like when I go to the beach by Prospect of Whitby in London. Exactly the same. What did you think of? Life. Future. <laughs> Bet you never predicted us, did you? I looked down as she looked up, our eyes locking for a moment. You, my dear, are the most unprecedented future I could have ever asked for. And yes, I miss this place, but I'm happy to get to share this with you, even if it's only in the dream state. 
I'm going to climb it. <laughs> With a laugh, she <laughs> ran off to the tree I had pointed out moments before. I followed, and we sat up there until the candle ran low, and we woke up once again in Paternoster. Mm-hmm.